Brady to Evans that time. First down, Tampa. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. Sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Second down, back to Fournette. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Brady going to go on fourth down. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Tyus Bowser with a pick. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. That right there is the inauspicious start that they were hoping to avoid in the turnover on the first possession. I love how you use those college-bound words like that, inauspicious. Well done. I really appreciate that. Thank but here's the thing for me. I'm just wondering if their game plan is incorrect. You know, I think they felt like they could come in and throw it around pretty well. That interception early, they may rethink how they go about attacking. Play action. It's Jackson. Well, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house from Buccaneer TD. Ryan Suckerbaugh for the point after. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. Six, they'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. First carry now for Gus Edwards. Akeem Hicks that time on the tackle. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line scrimmage. A lead of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Yeah, we kind of sensed that one. He got a little too far forward before throwing, and that one will set them back. And remember, at the NFL level, being aware of where the line of scrimmage is is crucial. And here's the other part. Any part of the quarterback's body that's near that line of scrimmage, he's going to get the benefit of the doubt. So he was clearly over the line. They're going on fourth down. It's Jackson. Oh, that's in the double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And the Buccaneers are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. And not the first quarter that he was hoping for. Now two interceptions. 
Chiefs throw. Well, the good ones, they run a well compartmentalized, right? Put these behind them, have that short memory, but understand why they threw the two interceptions. They go on and usually play a pretty decent game. Other quarterbacks, they have a hard time getting past it and often put the ball up for grabs the rest of the ball game. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 25 yards there on the catch and run. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And he fires one that's intercepted. And the Ravens are going to take over at their own 11-yard line. And as we've seen, points have been precious so far, and they just threw something away on that snap. And look, let's face it, as we advance further into this game, that play will be on the minds of everyone who's watching it. They wonder if this is the turning point. Is this the spot where those points were given away and could cost them a ball game? Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Play action. Now Jackson. Slings it to Anders, and it's complete. The tight end has it. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Second and short. That's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Edwards now on first and 10. And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he's trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. On second and seven, Jackson. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Levante David. And this is one heck of an individual performance we're witnessing. That is now his third interception. And keep in mind, folks, this isn't a safety or a quarterback. This is a linebacker. Does this feel to you like he's having a flashback? Because a lot of these linebackers we see in the NFL, in high school, they were offensive stars. They touched the football all the time. It's like he said to himself, let's go back and put on the letter jacket and go get the football. How about this one? Three interceptions thus far. Uh, meanwhile, the throw by Brady knocked away incomplete. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Back to throw here. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. Down inside the ten. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Cameron Bray, 35 yards. And the Bucs are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Extra point put through by Sucker, and that'll make the score 14 to 0. The box ready for the kickoff, and here we go, it's in the air. 
And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. offense set at the line for this next drive. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Ed one told me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This two shall pass, this two shall pass, and if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They get to get some control back get themselves reasserted and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Jackson now. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. First and ten, it's Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Throwing again on second down, Jackson. That is caught for Sean Bateman. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll run with Dobbins. And he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the 7. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Now it's Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Oh, they were so close. That close to their first points of the game. Just had to hang out just a second longer, but he couldn't complete the process of the catch to the jostling from the defender. Third and goal, Jackson. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. James Prochet, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that'll make our score 14 to seven. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Dard now going to bring this one out of the end zone. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. Bearing this one out for Evans. And incomplete on the deep ball. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. He'll look to throw. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, 
Tampa Bay. Mike Evans as the first half is winding down. And the Bucs would extend their lead here just before halftime. Extra point up and good by Sucka. And it's now 21-7. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Duvernay now going to break it out. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped it to 23. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. you back now alongside Charles Davis on Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. The Ravens set to receive the football trailing here as we resume action in the third quarter. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. set at the line for this next drive. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but then and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Jamal Dean, and the Bucs are going to take possession of the football. And that one is going to stay first play of the third quarter and a turnover. And you have to know that at halftime, they spent a lot of time going through their checklist of what they wanted to accomplish to start this third quarter. Turning it over like this was not on that list. Not at all. You, and you come out of the locker room trailing, so that first drive to establish momentum is very key. Crucial. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Throwing now is Brady. And brought in by Brady. Touchdown. Cameron Bray, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Buccaneers have moved out in front by three touchdowns. Extra point put through by Sucka, and a lead down to three touchdowns at 21. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Duvernay now going to bring it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback. Look at this! Middle of the field! A breakaway! Pass the 20! And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown! Mark Andrews, an 80-yard touchdown! And the Ravens are able to cut into that deficit. One play... 80 yards, pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Darden now going to bring this one out of the end zone. And he'll 
to be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot, up two scores here in the third quarter. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it was just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run in the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. To throw, it's Brady. Being chased out left. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. This is where good coaching and execution come into play because down this close, you absolutely don't want to turn it over. Good job keeping that in mind as he escaped, bought time, and decided throwing it away was his best option. A uh, second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now, what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Here's Brady. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from there. And right now, Charles, this is about building that lead little by little. And they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number at 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet. But that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. set at the line for this next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. And my goodness, another interception. Mike Evans picks it off, and the Buccaneers are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. I think you and I were a little surprised back earlier in the game when he threw a second interception. I mean, who would have thought a quarterback of his caliber picked now five times? It's beyond stunning to me because we're used to that with maybe a quarterback with less experience or less talent. But a quarterback of his caliber? I can't believe what we've just seen. Absolutely. If you would have told me this coming into the ball game, I would have said never. Not in a million years, but here we go. Brady now on first down. This is caught by Evans. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. The fourth touchdown pass in the game for Tom Brady. And the Bucs take the forced turnover on defense and convert it into six points. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And the lead is now 24. The Bucs ready for the kickoff. And here we go, it's in the air. Duvernay now, gonna bring it out. 
And he's probably realizing he should have stayed in the end zone as he can only muster a return to the 14-yard line. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. That would complete to Prochet. Yeah, he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Jackson firing quickly out wide for Bateman. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. To throw is Jackson. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Well, we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass is almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Jackson from the shotgun. He'll go underneath, dropping it off to Edwards. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Here's Jackson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Seven play of the drive, fourth time on third and eight. Jackson. Checks this down to Edwards, out of the backfield. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews. And the Ravens get a bit closer. It seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns him there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop him from all angles. This time, the tight end gets him. He's got it. So they convert the two that keeps their slim hopes alive as we're back to a two-score game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Darden now going to bring this one out of the end zone. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. 
Despite the lead here in the fourth, they're still taking shots. He's not content to sit on this lead at all. And to me, it raises the question of what's right in this game nowadays. Do you sit on the ball and run it because you have enough of a lead? Or do you try and extend it because you always feel like the other team can come back? Extend it. Have some fun. Another catch for him. He's over the 250-yard mark now for the game, and he's got another first down. Brady now to throw. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. They give him a gain of 38. Even with a big lead here in the fourth, it still bombs away. And frankly, it's working. Why should they stop? Go ahead and keep firing away and gaining those yards. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And that is caught, but the back judge right there to say incomplete. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is excellent. You get five, that's a whale of a game. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. Once you get into the red zone, spaces at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Five touchdown passes now for Tom Brady. And the Buccaneers have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Extra point put through by Saka, and that pushes the lead up to 23. The Bucks ready for the kickoff, and here we go. It's in the air. set at the line for this next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about set. And a loose football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they will set up shot in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble is going to matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth. It doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline still scratching his head. Yeah, no, he's scratching his head. But pretty writing a note or two about address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point, but being sloppy throughout the game, not going to help him improve. That throw by Brady incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Yeah, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. Play action. Now it's Brady. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. But their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns. And it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. Well, even with a huge lead, he was looking for more points. Why did the deep shot downfield? That one goes incomplete. Obviously, he wants to put more points on the board. Brady to throw for it on fourth down. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he's going to have the Bucks first down as they manage to convert 
And that'll keep the drive alive. It's a pickup of 19. And it'll give the Bucks a first down. Now Brady. And Brady, the tight end's got it. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. Brady to throw again. And Brady going to be intercepted a third time. And the Ravens are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. So I'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, Jackson. He gets this underneath to Dobbins. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They're going for it with Dobbins. And they are going to stop him on fourth and one as they'll wind up going backwards. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. Brady going to throw here. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. They're still throwing the football here. And obviously, the incompletion stops the clock. That's a bad thing. Feels to me like they're just keeping them honest on defense because you know they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and try and stop any type of a running play. Short little passes may work in exchange of running plays. Keep the clock moving, keep them moving. Yeah, I guess you're right. If they can get some first downs, just as good as running the football. This big game continues. Ten catches now and another first down. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, you just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. He's at the 50. The 30. 10. 5. And he will break. This back, it's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. Well, partner, this defense now with multiple interceptions in this game, but this time they say turnabout is fair play because remember, they had a pick six on the other side, and now they get a pick six of their own. Yeah, they actually added to some of their nice play throughout this ball game. A good effort by them to secure another interception on this one. A better effort to take it all the way back for six. And how about an exceptional effort to match their opposition's pick six from earlier in this game. And they'll try to run it in with Dobbins. And he is not going to get in here. So the decision to go for two does not pay off as they're unable to cut any further into their deficit. So despite the huge deficit, they're going to keep fighting. Here comes the onside kick. And they've got it. They recovered it. But hang on now, though. There's a penalty flag down. Well, CD, you understand. I mean, they're so eager trying to get back in this game here in the fourth quarter, but they touched that one a little too early before it went 10 yards. Brandon, in such a high-stakes scenario, everyone's feeling the pressure on this play. The special teams coordinator, which one is he going to pick in terms of kicks? Can the kicker execute it? Can the team wait for 10 yards? So many variables. And in this case, they didn't get it done. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And a timeout coming in. This will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining.
And this one is incomplete. They're certainly not letting up on the pressure in this one. And oftentimes you hear this expression, all gas, no break from defenses. But in this case, is the offense still throwing the football up big in the fourth quarter. Brady. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens come up with a late turnover, but it will probably only matter to the statisticians as this ball game is now officially over. And as this defense walks off the field, they should do so with their heads held high. What a performance made by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. Certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw for both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory.